The most recent classroom of the Elite episode was peak. And I'm sure Mr. H, Brandon, who does not give a fuck about Yamagata, is going to be very pleased with this episode. Let's see what he has to say. Oh, I can't believe it. It's like Christmas morning, everyone. Okay. The worst character, he's out of here. He's booted. He's Worst character. Is there no other character that we hate other than Yamauchi? Of all the different classes, there really isn't other, huh? There is no other pompous asshole like this. Like, who else is, like, second on the list? In terms of incompetency, it could be, like, Hondo or some shit. But, like, who really cares, right? I think Yamauchi might actually be the most hated character, yeah. Going off the eye. Uh, here's the thing. I'm rooting for Rewin right now to have a redemption. This is a guy who committed a war crime. He waterboarded K. Yet, here I am, rooting for Rewin, the war criminal, while everyone is shitting on Yamauchi. But... The twists and turns to get to that moment. To see a character who I thought was so chill get out of his seat and say, You Hirata. know what, Horikita? I'm voting you off. And his VA popped off, man. He did. But what they ended Yamauchi and Hirata's voice actors last episode, they went crazy. Hirata mask off moment, we knew it was coming, right? You could see the bags under his eyes every other episode. He's like building up to that tipping point. And finally, we've reached that tipping point. And his backstory better be good because so far it is the most unreasonable bullshit ever. It stems from leadership that is too authoritarian. He doesn't like the way Susune is assuming leadership even though he acknowledges what Yamauchi did was wrong. But despite what Yamauchi did was wrong, he's still willing to side with Yamauchi rather than Susune. He said, I'm going to cast my vote for you. Isn't that crazy? So how traumatic was Hirata's experience? What ended up doing with the whole point exchange and how class B and D work together. One to make it so no one is expelled from their class. And class D, Ryun gets to be shielded. Yeah. This felt like the greatest episode of... Four different chess games going on at once. I'm not really sure. Well, can we consider class A to be cons like part of the chess? Because he did save himself. He did save Ryun. And he saved Ichinose. That's three chess games. Now, Arisu. Katsuragi being saved there. Or Arisu casting all her votes into Aonokoji. I'd like to think that Aonokoji had a play in that. But, like, they haven't confirmed it in the show just yet. Classroom of the Elite. And it's not even close. Like, this was emotional. The yeah. writing. The way such a simple exam. Vote someone off. Pick your top three and your least favorite. And the way we go from Aonokoji having everything painted on him. To him not only being the most shielded in his class. But the way he Other helps classes. everyone without really even lifting too much of a finger, he kind of... Bro just sits there in silence and just like gives us an empty look. But he's already made all his moves. That's what Aonokoji does every fucking time. You look at him, he's like, what is he planning? What is he scheming? He's already done everything. And we're about to get baited. Kind of like navigate some people. But what's interesting is Saki Yanagi pretty much wanted this out. Ah, yes. My favorite character. Saki Yanagi Arisu. That's my favorite character. Yes. Come Like at the end of the day, it was pointed out in my comments last. It's not as bad as Otaku Spirits, you know. Sung Jin Ho, Yol Jin Ho, Jung Hong Su. Like, most likely, the entire reason, you know, Yamuchi is gone is because she didn't like the whole tripping scene before. And ultimately, she knew that Anokoji wouldn't get expelled. So this would probably cause a domino effect of chaos. I don't even think Arisu took any offense to the tripping scene. As much as I want to believe so, I feel like... Arisu was just using Yamauchi. It was a convenience. He's like, oh yeah, I remember you from the fucking mountain. Like, you're a little bit annoying. I'm going to use you as a project so that ultimately it's to... What? What was it at the end of the day? I'm sure Arisu has some ulterior motives, right? Just like how targeting Ichinose, that wasn't the actual goal. It's to get Ayana Koji's attention. So even in this situation, Yamauchi doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. He is more useless than her walking cane, okay? So it's like, what was her actual goal? Chaos, and honestly... The domino effect was fair. Unless she's being petty. Then I'll, all right, I'll take it back. If she's actually being petty, then all right. All right I, I love petty revenge, but I'd like to think that Yamauchi is so insignificant in the grand scheme of things that it didn't matter. Or, Arisu said, I took that personally. Fantastic. I have a full live reaction over Check his Patreon, Patreon out, guys. If you want to see my full uncut excitement, it's over there if you're interested. Like, this was perfection. 10 out of 10, best episode of the season. And I think yep. this episode seals the deal that this has become the best season of Classroom of the Elite. Oh, best season of Classroom of the Elite. Do you guys agree with this? What, what do we have so far? We've all, we're only on episode 8, right? We're only on episode 8. 
And hmm, Mountain Arc. It was pretty hype. It was pretty hype to see all the gang together. The revelation that we're no longer D class. We moved up. Fucking all the special exams kind of getting skipped, but it didn't matter because the goal was to get the expulsion mechanic with Nagumo versus Mana. With all the seeds being set there. And then, I, I, I don't know. And then there was Valentine stuff that happened. Was this the best season? I just, I love it so far. But like season two, Anokoji versus Ryuin, that whole setup. I don't know. I feel like season two was so strong. We'll, we'll have to let season three finish, right? This was so good. I was saying it. And honestly, I was convinced Yamuchi was going. Like, it wasn't until a boy got out of his chair and started redirecting his hatred towards Horikita that I was a little skeptical if that would go this way. Because she was making sense. She was pretty much throwing it in his face. And the fact that she didn't even need to bring up the fact that he was just kind of a slimy bastard about the rumors and everything. Yeah, we didn't even go there. We just went straight up objectively. You are the worst in our class in terms of metrics, analytics, stats, numbers doesn't lie. And he's like, what about EK? Sudo immediately throws his two quote unquote friends under the bus. And that's his knees like, yeah, they're a half step ahead of you though. You're still so trash. And then it's like you backstab us on top of that. What good reason is there to keep you around? Everything. He's the least talented. He basically was trying to throw his class under the bus and yeah. he was basically selling his class in yeah. order to get a date or a kiss or whatever else it might be. Just to sniff Arisu's fucking walking cane. Now, people are saying Yamagod is the equivalent of Jogo in Jujutsu Kaisen. And let me explain. There are some characters that are sometimes pitted against the strongest characters in that verse. And because that happens, it makes them look bad. Their only L's are against the strongest people in that anime. So like last episode, you could argue Yamauchi went head to head with two of the strongest in C-Class right now. Koenji and Ayana Koji, right? Could you not argue that Yamagod is actually insane for even getting this far? I, I saw some people make some excuses, playing some defense of the, uh, you know, for Yamauchi. And honestly, I do love those meme, you know, we're, we're reaching, we're doing a lot of mental gymnastics, but I do love it when people like try to think of it and try to make a narrative of like, Yamagod is actually super OP. Might have been that, you know, Saki Yanagi was promising him and the idea that no one was standing up for him and then when he like it's just like it's hilarious because i feel like koenji as well as ano koji are kind of like they're kind of soulmates in a way man like they kind of have mm. like a similar vibe he just is kind of sitting there chilling he's right they're both soulmates similar vibes because both of them don't give a fuck about the school everyone at the school wants to go to a class so bad to secure a good job some kind of career Ayano Koji doesn't give a fuck about that. He's here. Only point of him being here is because he can get away from his dad. Now, I don't think we're really getting away if the fucking principal right now could be substituted for some kind of white room influence. I feel like it's already too late, but that's why Ayano Koji is here. To get away from the white room connections because, you know, their outside connections are not allowed to contact the island. Koenji is the heir of a fucking conglomerate. His future is already decided. He will lead Japan into the next generation. He is the leader. Him being in this school, none of this shit matters. He could graduate at the bottom of the school. I know people are saying Koenji has ulterior motives. Just wait, bro. The light novel, yeah, you don't have to fucking spoil me. Why'd you even fucking let me know that? I'd rather not know that, but I already know that. Anyways, Koenji's future is already secured. His success in school, I doubt, would impact him at all in the future, right? So bro was just chilling, just chilling, and just waiting for like the last couple seconds of this game so that then he can get an A class and graduate and look fine, right? He's min-maxing, right? But, you know, Koenji's also just pretty much having the same type of fun, it feels like. And it was so great seeing that because you were seeing the cracks happen more and more and more. And by the time we left that class scene, you know, it was, everyone is so like, they were petrified. They were nervous. They didn't know what to do. And it, it, it helps because basically, you know, I don't think this was all an act from this dude. But when he gets up saying like the idea of selling your teammates out or this or that, like he was he was pissed. Like his voice actor. I don't know, man. I thought we're Hirata was upset that Yamauchi would sell out. I want to coach like that. But he was more upset as Suzune's authoritative leadership. What the fuck happened in the past? Honestly, this flashback better be good because so far, all my respect for Hirata has gone out the window. Like his flashback better be next fucking level. He better have been part of some kind of cult and his mom was sacrificed due to some dictator saying, your mom gotta go. Some shit like that, it better be on that tier because if it's not, if it's not a good excuse, 
All he's doing right now, none of it fucking makes sense objectively, and he's acting irrational, and I hate him for doing this. We're in, like, an Attack on Titan scene where, like, a character was just, like, breaking down emotionally. Like, the voice actor went in hard, and it was a little worrisome. I was like, oh, shit, are we actually gonna have, like, a very split vote going on? Like, I knew, I know Koji was gonna be safe, but everyone else, I, I just didn't know. And when we came in the next day, it was just like, I've never seen such boldness for such a dumbass. Because That's his specialty. Lethal, was it? He's, he's the self-proposed, uh, self-proclaimed lethal weapon, right? Yamauchi has the combination of the two deadliest characteristics in a human being. Confidence and stupidity. I've been saying this over and over again. These two personality traits, having utmost confidence, but never being skeptical or ever doubting or asking yourself, are you wrong? Am I wrong, right? And just having absolute belief, stupidity, and confidence, these are the true seven, like, it's two deadly sins, dude. This shit is so deadly. It is actually a lethal weapon because they themselves don't know they're wrong, right? And everybody has to suffer due to their incompetence. It's just so infuriating. Because even if you survived that outburst like you're saying listen i got everyone to you know the other class to give all their positive points to me so i'm safe even if all you douchebags do this just consider the fact that the school just did this as a test they can do it again they can do with similar sure. things do you really want to make an enemy out of the class you're pretty much rubbing the noses in that you're better and you have help from other people like you think that Yamachi would even go beyond to think about that scenario, Brandon? Hell no, he's too dumb. You know this. There's just not a single brain cell in this dumb motherfucker's yep, brain. Yeah, yeah. Holy hell, true. Like, I just true. to see his reaction and his breaking down to the fact that I know Koji was number one, yep. most positive ranked, and he was the least. Oh now, I wonder if Ano Koji getting number one votes, like positive votes, does this make him suspicious? Because, like, it was pretty much told that, like, Anakoji got sold out, right? This is public knowledge. Yamagod fucking, you know, he sided with Arisu and they're trying to get Anakoji out. But then now, all of a sudden, rug pull. Anakoji got all the positive votes. Does this make his NPC act super suspicious, right? Because I'd be like, hold the fuck up. Wait, wait, wait. How did you get all this, Anakoji? What is he going to do? Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to tea ceremony and piano and calligraphy. Don't worry about it. I don't know, man. I, I was just, I was ready to throw a party. I was so happy. The voice actors went an extra hard this week. His breaking down scene, the one he grabs a chair trying to beat our boy. Best scene. When he grabbed the chair and tried to attack with Ryuan, right? When he showed murderous intent to Ryuan and Ryuan said, you dare show murderous intent at me? Then don't blame me for what's about to happen. Then fucking Chavashira stops the fight. I have my phone out. Snapchat video is recording. I'm already yelling, world star, world star hip hop. And then the fight stopped. No, oh, I was so close. I was so fucking close, dude. Boy, and I'm like, there's two characters you would not want to swing a chair at. You swung it at one of them, yeah. and goddamn, knowing him on his way out of school, he was probably going to try to do that to Ryun. I'm just like, I am <laughs> not going to shed a tear that we're no longer get Like, he was a girl. I shed a lot of tears laughing that he was gone, bro. Bye-bye. Like character for this arc, the infuriating aspects about him, I am glad exists. But I'm not shedding a tear that this D-bag's gone. I laughed so much. Was really I was crying. About the class scene, like, prior to the voting taking place, was that, um, you know, Kushida, she's... I saw mm. some people last week say they actually thought she would get voted off. And honestly, Um, so, I think that uh, my understanding of Kushida is actually quite off, right? Because I was like, why the fuck would Kushida even tell Anokoji the episode prior to this? That, like, Yamagod and Arisu, they're up to something. Well, she didn't tell us. She just confirmed it after Anakoji was like, it's them, aren't they? She's like, yeah, maybe, right? So it's like, you showed your hand way too early. It backfired. Now you look bad. But then people like, nah, bro. Kushida actually has no clue. She knows that Anakoji is pretty smart. But she doesn't actually know he's a puppet master. She still has, like... She underestimated him you know again and it's fucking crazy dude honestly once we started redirecting something are you ready to get permabanned i'm gonna give you about um 10 seconds to justify why i shouldn't permaban you for giving me a spoiler like that and i've tried my best to ignore all these different comments so far i've tried my utmost best but are, are you ready to get permabanned what's your excuse 
What's your excuse? I'm pretty stern about this shit. I don't fuck around when it comes to me getting spoilers and ruining the whole vibe. It's a meme, bro? You think you can just get away with it just a prank? You think you can just do that? How about I ban you and see if you come back next year or not? How would you like that, huh? Things, it kind of did feel like they're painting her as to be the one to go away. But the biggest thing was that certain characters have talent. And if you have talent and not liked, or you have talent and you betrayed, it's worth more than a character who has no talent and hasn't betrayed, right? Like, Here's what I think. I used to save Katsuragi, right? Maybe it wasn't like Anakoji saving Katsuragi. People said that Anakoji actually sent his positive vote for Yahiko. Katsuragi's right-hand man. So if the assumption is true that Arisu actually saved Katsuragi because he is more competent and has talent, doesn't this, at the end of the day, it feels like this first year is just like tutorial for second year. We're like gathering all the key players, right? Because I'm sure we're all going to work together, right? Ryuen, Arisu, Anakoji, Ichinose, even fucking Katsuragi. I feel like everybody's going to come together to fight a different force. And what's that going to be? In second year, right? Different characters have to show up. We can't just be fighting the same people. All this first year bullshit is to get to know each other. Who's legit or not? Who's competent? Who's got the talent? Then we go to second year. We got the first year squad, right? We got that locked down. Maybe we collaborate. Something happens in second year. And what I'm really excited about is not really the second year students that's going to go to third year as we move up a year. It's the new cohort of first year students that's going to show up. Because I'm sure there's going to be exceptionally talented students just like Anakoji or some other people, right? What if another white room product enters in first year? You know what I mean? I feel like, like the new students coming in are just as hyped as the second year students right now that are going to be seniors that we haven't just seen yet. Yeah, basically, we're at the point of eliminating someone we didn't need. So the class is going to be a lot more skeptical of her, but she still had her weight in gold. So obviously she was able to survive that, but drama going to be on the horizon. But I think the real shocker about this episode was how B and D class worked together because we knew her girl was, she was going to potentially... Well, they... You work together through Anakoji, right? Then Anakoji pretty much has set everything up. All right, give me the fucking points. Get the points. Give it to fucking each and they'll say, all right, y'all good. All right, go, get out of here. date the student council president to get a bunch of points, but that wasn't going to be enough points. Thank you, Night Ren, for the tier one sub three months, man. I appreciate that, bro. To protect someone from being expelled. Ryun was pretty much guaranteed to be expelled because he was the most hated in his class. A couple of his friends don't want that to happen. And I mean, do you blame Ryuan for being the most hated? Because like, if you really think about it, everyone is terrified of them, right? Like everybody is terrified of Ryuan and and like, maybe Albert and Nishizaki Ibuki, but Ryuan was the number one, you know, guy that's enforcing all the violence, so it makes sense. And the way Anakoji just kind of pushes them in the right direction and lets them figure it out themselves. It's so interesting because if you look at the early stages of Classroom of the Elite, it really felt like it was up to him or Horikita to kind of make everything work in a certain way. But mm. now things are starting, it kind of feels like a well-oiled machine. Because we got the framework set up. Where just slight pushes in a certain direction can cause such a beautiful storm yes. to occur. But yes, all the pieces are coming together. We're starting to get to know who is competent, who's got the talent. I can simply just sit back and let the simulation play and just make a little tweaks here and there when I need to step in. That's Aon Koji's grand plan after all, right? By getting Ryun to give all of his points to his friend here because... If he gets expelled, the points are gone anyway, and he's not an idiot. He knows he's gone, so gives the points. They then give the points to her, which allows her to protect someone in their class, and then they will then in return, because now they know no one's going to be eliminated, all the positive points to Ryun, which protects him. Ah, brilliant. Ryun, yes. Absolutely brilliant. Just like Did not see that coming at all. I mean, I just, I was just hoping our boy would get eliminated and to see all the extra little bells and whistles they added, it was absolutely perfection. The music during the first 10 minutes of that conversation, it's just them standing in a classroom or most of them are sitting. The voice actors, the music. This show is proof that you don't need fight scenes in an anime to like be hype. Now, yes, Anakoji versus Ryuin, that was fucking hype. I will not complain about it. Even Koenji versus Yamagod, the little chair scuffle, that's not really a fight, but it's a little bit of action, right? Obviously, I got super hyped for that, but I'm just telling you, man. All you need, compelling plot, great soundtrack and voice acting. Animation's not that important. If you're going to have a fight, it's probably important. But if you got those three, 
plot, great story, right? Plot, voice acting, soundtrack. You got those three. You can do so much, dude. You don't need fights, man. This was a fucking casting the votes just to see who got voted, you know, last in like the rankings, right? It's so simple, but it was so hyped because of the story the directing the fact that an episode with very little Aino koji talking and just the way his influence has infected this cast is just so good yeah Without a single puppet master mind, this is the best episode of classroom of the elite and the best i said this too during my reaction i jumped the gun it might be a recency bias i think a lot of times Recency bias hits too hard. You gotta let it fucking cook. You gotta wait a year and come back and revisit, but I think this is definitely top three. Top three episodes. Ryun versus Ayano Koji, I think that's up there, right? And I think this episode's up there too. I don't know what other episodes are up there. You guys are gonna have to remind me, but yes, it's definitely a contender for best episode. It helps that my most infuriating hated character, he got voted off the island. I was hoping he was gonna take a swing at the team. It's the best at the moment since season three hasn't ended yet. Ho oh. ho. What are you trying to tell me, huh? You trying to tell me that the next couple episodes are gonna be even more peak? Oh, okay, all right. So the teacher could just knock the shit out of him because honestly, man, as soon as she walked into that classroom and he was opening his mouth and she's pretty much just telling him to sit down and shut up, I could tell that she already took a peek at who was going home that day and she was like, I can't. Chav is hearing you. Chav's new from the fucking beginning. Way to get this smug bastard out of here. But uh, her just like almost dragging him. Kind of Okay, the pool episode, season one filler pool episode. That shit was very entertaining. Argo Squad installing camps to peek at girls with failing and them fucking acting. Fucking Ryuan and the gang walking up to a fucking wet floor sign and telling Albert, get rid of it. I do, I do what I please. And Albert's like, you got it, boss. I and Koji's like sinister soundtrack playing whenever we're doing dumbass fucking this one. This soundtrack right here. This one. This only plays during Ayana Koji intense scenes, but then in that pool episode, it played during the fucking dumbass scenes. Kind of giving a pat on the back as you see him crush behind the door, just like, oh, what a pathetic little weasel. I'm so glad he's gone. And I'm yeah. most happy that Ryun is still around because we have to remember characters who might infuriate us or have done things that, you know, have warranted a lot of targets on their back. Like, you know, waterboarding right now. Isn't it crazy? I'm so glad Yamauchi is gone, but Ryuan's still here. Brandon agrees with me. Isn't it crazy that we are rooting for a war criminal right now? As you see him crush behind the door, just like, oh, what a pathetic little weasel. I'm so glad he's gone. And I'm most happy that Ryuan is still here. Isn't that crazy? We have to remember characters who <laughs> might us or have done. Remember, he also intensely broke a girl's ankle to make Susan grovel and beg for points. Remember? Remember that? I remember that. Some things that, you know, have worn it a lot of targets on their back can be so useful, which is a lot of the characters in Aino Koji's class, but Ryun is such an interesting character with where he developed, especially yes. over season two. I'm so glad he's still safe, but... And other characters, again, we got Ryun, we have Ichinose, we have perhaps Arisu and Katsuragi, right? We got all these key players that we all know from first year. As we go into second year, are we going to all start working together to fight like a bigger enemy? Something like that? That was a lot of points to use to make it so no one gets eliminated. And with how cruel the school is, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a guarantee of expulsion in another test or two. Please, let's do it. Let this week's episode down below. Definitely my favorite episode. I agree. I think this episode was peak, perhaps contender for best episode of the anime all three seasons. But again, it's not completely over yet. Please go sub to Mr. Brandon's channel. Like his videos if you did. And goddamn, the rest, we have what? 9, 10, 11, 12, and perhaps 13. I'm not really sure. People are hyping the fuck out of this new character that's about to get introduced. I don't know who we're talking about, but goddamn, I think we got some even more peak episodes coming after this one.